Welcome to the new office. With Office 365, you can quickly migrate up to a... Th this guide is the first in the series, Exchange Cutover Migration with Office 365. These two guides were designed to be taken in order as they follow the prescribed process for performing an Exchange Cutover Migration. In this guide, you'll see how to configure your on-premises environment in preparation for an Exchange Cutover Migration. To navigate this guide, either click the prompts indicated on the screen or use your forward and back arrow keys. This is your organization's Microsoft Forefront Threat Management Gateway Server, where you're signed on as an administrator. Before you can migrate your on-premises mailboxes to Office 365, you must first configure Outlook Anywhere with a trusted third-party certificate. The certificate will be imported into Exchange Server to secure communications. First, you'll see how to create a Certificate Signing Request, CSR. To get started, navigate to the Microsoft Management Console. Follow the on-screen prompts to continue. This is the Microsoft Management Console. From here, administrators can create snap-ins that provide tools for managing various system and network resources. Before creating a certificate signing request, you'll need to add the certificate snap-in to the console root window. Follow the prompts on the screen to see how. From the list of available snap-ins, select Certificates. Verify that Local Computer is selected in the Select Computer dialog box, and then click Finish. Now that you've added the certificate snap-in, you can create the CSR. In the navigation pane, expand Certificates, and then follow the prompts. Ensure you have the proper credentials to verify your right to obtain the certificate, and then click Next. Click Next, and then follow the prompts on the screen to continue. Specify the certificate properties, beginning with a friendly name. On the Subject tab, follow the on-screen prompts to enter details about the computer for which the certificate is being issued. Now, follow the prompts on the screen to create alternative names for the certificate. Next, click the Extensions tab. Here, you can add details about how the certificate will be used. Follow the prompts on the screen to continue. In this case, select Server Authentication. Next, click the Private Key tab, and then follow the prompts on the screen to continue. Select the Exchange key type. Next, expand Key Options. Under Key Options, enter additional key parameters. Follow the prompts on the screen to continue. Select the option to Make Private Key Exportable. Review the settings you've selected for your customized certificate request. Then, click Next to complete the CSR. Specify where to save the certificate request file. Click Finish to save the CSR as a text file. Now that you've created the request, you'll submit it to a third-party certificate provider that will then issue the certificate. Follow the on-screen prompts to continue.
Now, follow the prompts on the screen to highlight and copy the text of the request. Next, navigate to a trusted third-party certificate provider of your choice. Follow the prompts on the screen to continue. Here's an example of a third-party certification authority website. Follow the prompts on the screen to submit the request. Once the request is submitted, an email will be sent with the certificate files. Click Submit to complete the request. Here, an email message has been received from the Certification Authority. In the message, click the attached DigiCert zip file. Next, save the file to the computer where you will install the certificate. Follow the prompts on the screen to continue. Next, open the folder and extract the certificate files. Now you can import the newly issued certificate into the local computer certificate store on the Threat Management Gateway server. First, switch back to the Management Console where you added the certificate snap-in. In the Management Console, navigate to the Certificate Import Wizard where you'll see how to import the certificate you just downloaded. Follow the prompts on the screen to continue. The Certificate Import Wizard lets you import certificates into a certificate store on the computer. Browse to the certificate file and then follow the on-screen prompts to continue. Select the certificate file Verify that the correct certificate store is displayed, and then click Next. Click Finish to complete the process of importing the certificate. Now that the certificate has been imported into the local computer certificate store, the next step is to export the certificate with its private key so it can be imported into Exchange Server. To begin this process, Open the Certificate Store. In the Certificate Store, select the certificate you just imported, and then open the Certificate Export Wizard. Follow the prompts on the screen to continue. In the Certificate Export Wizard, select the option to export the private key with the certificate. Follow the on-screen prompts to continue. To protect the exported copy of the security certificate, assign it a password. In the File to Export window, enter the name of the file you want to export from the certificate store. Finally, verify the export setting you chose, and then click Finish to complete the export process. Now, close out of the console root window and navigate back to the location of the exported certificate, where you'll begin the next task. Now that you've successfully exported the certificate with its private key, you'll copy it to Exchange Server. To get started, copy the certificate from your local disk and then navigate to Exchange Server. Follow the on-screen prompts to continue. Next, paste a copy of the certificate into the folder on Exchange Server. The certificate is now copied to the on-premises Exchange server. Follow the prompts on the screen to continue. Next, you'll see how to review and edit firewall policies in the Forefront Threat Management Console to ensure that Outlook Anywhere and Exchange Access are enabled. First, navigate to the Forefront TMG Console. This is the Forefront TMG console, 
where you'll associate the previously exported certificate with the web listener to authenticate and route traffic from external network connections to your organization's network. To do this, click Toolbox and then open the web listener. In the web listener, replace the temporary certificate with the new certificate that you imported earlier. Follow the on-screen prompts to see how. Ensure that the new certificate is highlighted and then click Select. Next, you'll verify your organization's public domain name and IP address in Exchange Web Access. Follow the on-screen prompts to continue. Verify that the domain name and IP address are correct and then click OK. Since you changed the certificate associated with the web listener for this firewall policy, you'll need to apply this change. Follow the on-screen prompts to continue. Click OK to complete this task. Next, you'll see how to verify the required DNS records for your organization. First, navigate to DNS Manager in the Microsoft Management Console. Verify the records in the Forward Lookup Zone to ensure they're configured for your organization. Next, you'll see how to import the new certificate to Outlook Anywhere in Exchange Server. To begin, navigate to Internet Information Services Manager. Follow the on-screen prompts to continue. This is Internet Information Services Manager. Navigate to the security properties of the Outlook Anywhere website where you'll import the certificate. In the dialog box, click Server Certificate to open the Web Server Certificate Wizard and then follow the prompts on the screen. Next, browse to the location of the certificate file. The certificate has been selected. Click Next to continue. Enter the password for the certificate and then verify that the certificate details are correct and then click Next. Click Finish to complete the process of importing the certificate to the Outlook Anywhere website. Next, you'll see how to revoke anonymous access for the RPC service. Follow the prompts to see how. Under Authentication and Access Control, click Edit. To disable anonymous RPC access, clear the checkbox and then follow the prompts on the screen to continue. This task is now complete. Close the window to continue. The next task is to verify that your domain has been added to the default recipient policy in Exchange. To begin, navigate to Exchange System Manager. Follow the on-screen prompts to continue. In Exchange System Manager, navigate to the default recipient policy to verify the domain. Follow the on-screen prompts to continue. Verify that your organization's domain is the default SMTP address. When finished, click OK.
finally, you'll see how to verify the email settings for your users. Follow the prompts to continue. In the Active Directory Users and Computers console, expand the onprem.local folder and then navigate to the properties for a user account. Follow the on-screen prompts to continue. Verify that your domain is listed as the primary SMTP address. Then open the account properties. Verify that your domain is listed as the user logon name suffix. Click OK and then close the console. Your next task is to test remote connectivity to your on-premises exchange server to ensure that it's configured correctly for the migration. To begin, navigate to the Microsoft Remote Connectivity Analyzer website. Follow the on-screen prompts to continue. You can test connectivity by using the Microsoft Remote Connectivity Analyzer site in your web browser. This site is designed to test different connectivity scenarios for Microsoft products. In this case, you'll test connectivity for Outlook Anywhere. Select Outlook Anywhere and then follow the on-screen prompts. Enter the credentials for an on-premises exchange user account. Next, manually specify the server settings. Follow the prompts on the screen to continue. For the RPC proxy authentication method, select BASIC. Carefully type in the verification code. Then follow the on-screen prompts to test RPC connectivity. The connectivity test completed successfully. Expand test steps to view the test details. This guide, Preparing the On-Premises Exchange Environment for Migration, is now complete. In this guide, you saw how to configure your on-premises environment in preparation for an exchange cutover migration. We encourage you to progress to the next guide in the series, Performing an Exchange Cutover Migration. Thank you for...